Blockhead's garage, and as promised, we are putting that in there tonight. Um, for you guys that have been following the videos, you may notice that this is getting longer. I promised these guys that I wasn't going to trim until that ran, so we may see what this ends up like. Uh, we got the whole crew here tonight. What are y'all doing just standing around? Installing our aluminum flywheel. Uh, make sure you install your pilot bearing first. It's got a little shoulder that it sits in. Make sure you seat it all the way in. Um, this flywheel is kind of an interfer interference fit. Uh, so take like four bolts and kind of gradually pull it in until it's fully seated. The bolts torque to 77 foot pounds final. Uh, we ended up going, we went two rounds with 35 foot pounds and then 77 foot pounds to make sure it was fully seated. Um, so we put Loctite on those. Uh, there is a, a like a protective film that comes on these, these uh, on the steel ring here, keeps it from rusting while it's in, in shipping. So make sure you clean that off really good. You don't want your brand new clutch and flywheel slipping. We're gonna set our new clutch in. We got from UUC. Uh, it comes with our little alignment tool. I should just set that in, and this bit's gonna go in our pilot bearing and sit just like that. Um, we talked about the protective film that's on the flywheel. There's also one on the ring of the pressure plate. You wanna make sure you get that cleaned off too. And we will take and set this up here. And this is the same kind of way, thing as the, uh, as the flywheel. You kinda of wanna tighten these bolts in a, in a gradual manner. So they all pull up evenly. All right, so we're going to start tightening. Like we said, we're just going to pull them, kind of do a, a star pattern, just like you do on your wheels. Tighten a little bit at a time. And these torque anywhere from 16 to 18 foot pounds. It doesn't take much. Uh, another thing you need to know about doing these, since we're putting on an aluminum flywheel, you don't want to use any thread locker on the threads of these bolts. So once we have these all fully seated, I'm going to grab our torque wrench and make sure they're torqued properly. So you want to check while you tighten these down, make sure you can get your alignment tool in and out uh, smoothly, because that's basically what your input strap is going to be doing. You want it to go in and not bind. Same kind of star pattern on the torque. Once we got them final torque, we'll check our alignment tool again. Slides in and out nice. Um, so this is done. We're going to grab our training next and get it bolted out to uh, clean up underneath the car because we got to go a lot further. All right, let's back out. To read the voice of Snarf, please welcome Snarf. Right as a
attached to it. The engine had to go almost vertical to fit in the engine bay, which meant removing the entire front suspension from the car, dropping it below so that the engine would pass through and we'd get the transmission into place. We also had to remove the power steering pump pulley to make it fit. But other than that, everything clears. Um, we got our motor mounts all bolted up. We still haven't finished our training mount, so that's just sitting on a jack right now, but... Um, so, if you're going to do this and you want to bolt it on with the transmission, go ahead and just drop your, your front subframe. It'll make life way easier. Just get it out of there to begin with. I don't know if it wouldn't be worth it to unbolt the training and try to stick that in afterwards. But if you do, it'll be really tough to get to the transmission bolts. They're, there's not much They're room. tight. There's not much room anywhere. It's kind of tight here and tight over there and tight over there. It's almost like they didn't mean for this car to have a V8. But it's so worth it. All right. So now we're going to mount up our garage logistics extensions for our transmission mount. And uh, what these do is they move the uh, transmission mount further back in the car uh, to fit the new uh, six-speed that we're putting in. We're doing our best to line these up nice and square. We're going to tack them together and uh, test fit them under the car. All right, guys, I thought I'd give you a shot of this installed. Uh, basically just extends back pick up an extra set of these bolts from like pelican parts or something like that uh i put all steel lock nuts because i like i don't want this junk coming loose but suggestion if you're doing this uh try to leave some weight get your get your nuts started and get leave the weight of the transmission because those little square heads like to push up and spin you'll fight them forever just give it a little bit of weight so it holds them down in their slots and kind of tighten them up evenly and Everything goes together. Alright guys, we're going to close this one out. We got our motor all bolted up. We got our transmission mount done. i um, going to show you a couple of things we're going to be working on next time. I did talk to some guys, a little preview here, to some guys on the forum. Uh, and they said, do, you know, try not to run the aftermarket oil filter mount I was thinking of doing. So we're going to rework our factory housing and mount it over here in our fender well. And uh, we'll show you how that's going to work. We got our, we cut our factory fittings now. We're going to weld AN fittings to adapt to our, our uh, Mishimoto cooler and our adapter plate we've already got in here. Um, so next time we're going to be working on mounting our brake reservoirs, our plumb, our power steering, mount our oil filter, and we'll just see what else we can get to. And as always, check out our Facebook. Um, we had a couple guys come show and tell us what they were working on. So uh, join them. We'd love to hear what you're working on and how your progress is going. 
and uh, we'll catch you next time. Oh, <laughs> I have a vision.